Well, the first derivative is given to you. The first derivative is f prime of x is equal to 4 thirds x to the 1 third. So what we're going to do is we're going to get max, min, increasing, decreasing. That's what comes off the first derivative. So I want to know where f prime equals 0 or f prime does not exist. F prime equals zero is where four thirds is just a constant. So that's where x to the one third equals zero, or x equals zero. So essentially cube both sides, if you want to know what to do. Now, is there any place where x to the one third is not defined? No, domain is all wrong numbers. So at this point, I can say uh, there's nothing coming out of here. So what, and what I'm dealing with is one critical number. The issue ends up being, what's, is this multiplicity of this guy even or odd? What's the numerator? Numerator's a power. It's odd, right? So that says, because this is a one, it's going to be an x to the one power whenever you go to square both sides or cube both sides, so that what you're looking at, it's multiplicity odd, so it changes. That means that I have a max or a min at zero. Got to be a min. Why? Because the arrows are going up on both sides, right? So let's see if that's the case. So at zero, it changes across zero. Uh, pull one. That's my going to be my critical number. And if I look at 3 fourths times 1 to the 1 third, positive or negative? Change negative. So decreasing followed by increasing. I know this guy is a minimum. So that says that we have a min at x equals 0 and that it's increasing from 0 to infinity and decreasing from minus infinity to 0. Which is how a minimum behaves. Then we come down to, this should be f double prime, second derivative. And we do the same thing. Now, the difference is here, this is 4 ninths, all right, but this is 1 over x to the 2 thirds. So that I want to know where f double prime equals 0 or f double prime does not exist. Well, this is where, when you come right down to a 4 ninths again, it's not going to be an issue because I just have 1 over x to the 2 thirds power. So this would say I'd have 1 over x to the 2 thirds equaling zero. The only way that could be zero is if the numerator is zero. Well, one can never equal zero. So there are none. Or f double prime does not exist. That's where the denominator can't be zero or x can't be zero. Now, this is where what we know becomes important. The domain of f, it's not exactly how I wanted to write it. The domain of f was what? All real numbers. And it had no VAs. We know that. That means that x equals 0 is a critical number.
which means it could be an inflection point or not. And this is where the issue comes in. What multiplicity is this zero? That's the guy that establishes multiplicity. It's the power. It's multiplicity two. two. That means there is no change. Cube root of two appears twice. So x equals zero appears twice. So that says I don't have an inflection point. Because I only have one thing on my number line. And there's no change. Choose one. And four ninths, one over one to the two thirds, positive or negative. Positive, no change, positive. This guy is always concave up. So what do I know? He has no inflection point. And he's concave up. from minus infinity to infinity. Mm, we're not done. Turn back to the previous page. Because we still have a graph to do. Yes. I said to change that to double prime. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a typo. It should be F double prime. Okay. That's called cut and paste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes you get all the changes made, sometimes you don't. Okay, back to the previous page. So, what I know now is that. And I need two things. I need my pencil and an eraser. <laughs> Is that this guy kind of looks like a parabola, right? Kind of looks like that, but not. Because you're going to say to yourself, well, why? Eh? But, 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 but it, it's parabolas at zero would have a derivative. But this guy doesn't, that doesn't exist. Well. If I'm going to do this thing, I need to set up a t-bar chart to get some points in. So, uh, and this is going to be the cube root of x to the fourth. And with my handy dandy little calculator, if I put in negative two, I get 2.5. If I put in negative one, I get one. If I put in zero, I get zero. If I put in one, I get one. And that's because I'm taking x and raising it to the fourth power. So it's going to be symmetric. And if I put in negative two, I get 2.5. Oh, positive two. Sorry about that. Thank you. And so at negative two, one, two, 2.5. At negative one, positive one at 0, 0, at 1, 1, at 2, 2.5. Now, the difference is this guy is coming down and he's not rounded. What's actually here is a point. It's not as steep as absolute value, but it's going to remind you a lot of absolute value. And then he's going to go up and look a lot like a parabola. The, distant, the difference is a, at zero, if I'm going to graph a parabola, it's rounded.
it's rounded. This guy comes down to a little bit more of a point, which is why you have the derivative not existing. Because remember, if you try to get something to, to, to balance on a point, it's going to fall one direction or the other. If you try to get something, if something is much more rounded, it's got a flatter surface and it'll hold that tangent. The problem is this guy's more two point, he is two pointed. So a tangent line would teeter totter, which is why the second derivative doesn't exist. Where it would, it would exist if something were, if it were more rounded. And it's in essence, essentially, uh, what happened. So that's what he looks like. 